Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rose, and welcome to episode 235 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are an Xbox-related fun fact together. The show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please do me a favor, subscribe in your favor, and then leave a positive review if you like the show. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. There were no big games out last week, but the games coming out this week include Roller Drum, Dopamine, Forest Grove, Orton Was the Case, Heavy Burden, Silent Scream, The Traveler's Path, All of Us Are Dead, Arcadian Atlas, Devils Inside, Roots of Evil, Crashy Laps, Eldorand, Gangs of Sherwood, Pinball M, This Means Rap, Pixel Cafe, Moat Solo, No Girlfriend Since Birth, Truck and Logistics Simulator, Turok 3, Shadow of Oblivion Remastered, One Square, Steam World Build, Zomborg, The Lost Legends of Redwall, The Scout Anthology, and Kingdoms and Castles. Now to last week's biggest news stories, and we have four to cover this week. Number one, Xbox Series X and S European sales tank while PlayStation flourishes. Tom West at True Achievements writes, According to recent data, Microsoft has seen a drop in European sales of its Xbox Series X and S consoles by almost half since October 2022, putting the tech giant far behind Nintendo and PlayStation, the latter of which has seen an incredible increase in sales. As reported by GameIndustry.biz, Xbox Series X and S sales in Europe have dropped by 52% over October last year. Nintendo sits just above Microsoft in second place, even though Switch sales have seen a 20% drop year on year. Leading the charge is Sony, which has seen its PlayStation 5 sales increase by an incredible 143% over the last year. According to the data, Microsoft is falling behind on console sales in month-on-month comparisons as well. GameIndustry.biz mentions that PlayStation's Marvel Spider-Man 2 and Nintendo Super Mario Bros. Wonder both broke sales record when they released in October of 2023, while Microsoft Starfield, which launched in September, didn't break any. Starfield launched into Xbox Game Pass on Series X and S and PC. With that in mind, PlayStation 5 sales were up 11% last month compared to September, Switch sales were up to 10%, and Xbox Series X and S sales sadly dropped by 20%. Microsoft's drop in console sales could be a multitude of reasons, especially with its slow rollout of exclusive games. The company has said that it expects to release new exclusive titles more often from 2024, so that could help on that front. Xbox Game Pass could also be playing a role in the company's drop in sales, as all of its exclusive games drop into its Xbox Game Pass service on the day of release, with the majority of them hitting PCs at the same time, not to mention mobile via Xbox Cloud Gaming. Many of Samsung's QLED TVs now come with Xbox Cloud Gaming built in, again removing the need for players to have a physical console to access the games. It's also worth noting that leaked court documents shown during Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard reveal that the company is potentially planning to drop a mid-gen Xbox Series X and S refresh next year. This is tough to see, but it's hard to really analyze because it's almost like comparing apples to oranges to bananas. I mean, the big three in Microsoft, PlayStation, and Nintendo are all just doing such wildly different things. PlayStation 5 really being that hardcore and casual gaming machine, Microsoft and Xbox really pushing that subscription service in Game Pass, and Nintendo being that dominant force with a family-friendly machine that is mobile and a home console. It's really hard to see this as Xbox has been doing so much to increase this. It's going to be really interesting to see if they can actually hit a stride in 2024 and what the console sales might look like next year. Number 2. For its 10th anniversary, Killer Instinct has gone free to play on all platforms. Voicing Kuniki at VG247 writes, The 2013 Killer Instinct reboot is 10 years old now, and to celebrate its anniversary, the game is getting a whole new edition, as well as being free to play everywhere. Earlier this week, Killer Instinct turned 10, as much as that might age some of you, and developer Iron Galaxy shared in a recent blog post all of the big changes coming to the game, including the base game free to everyone. Previously on Xbox One, the game was available as a free-to-play title, but on PC you had to buy it outright. Now the base game will be free to play on all platforms, including Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC. The definitive edition of the game will also no longer exist, instead being replaced by the Anniversary Edition. This new edition is a premium upgrade for those that want to unlock all 29 fighters, and things like skins and accessories. Don't worry about all those that you already own in the definitive edition as you'll get the upgrade to the anniversary edition free of charge. This new version also comes with VIP double XP booster, specialty holiday accessories, and more. For some reason, the definitive edition app with developer interviews, concept art, and the soundtrack 
as well as the Xbox Killer Instinct Classic 1 and 2 are being removed from the Anniversary Edition, though you can still download them if you want from the Definitive Edition. Those of you that might want to try out the games for the first time with the base game for free will also have access to one fighter which rotates weekly, same as it did on Xbox, only now that's the case for all platforms. As I know you won't be able to buy individual fighters anymore, you'll have to buy the whole Anniversary Edition which costs $30. Killer Instinct does have a big cult classic following an audience. Just not really being into fighters, this has never done anything for me. But I'm seeing this new story across all the different social media platforms get a lot of traction. So shout out to the Killer Instinct audience, hopefully more people will be playing with you. Number 3, Call of Duty 2024 leaks suggest new Black Ops set during the Gulf War. Sean Carey at True Achievements writes, With Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 now a few weeks old, it's obviously time to start talking about next year's COD release which is reportedly a new Black Ops game developed by Treyarch. As per a new report from Windows Central, which cites multiple sources familiar with Activision's plans, Call of Duty 2024, quote, will sport the Black Ops moniker once again, end quote, and is set to, quote, explore a nuanced narrative of the goal for, with a critical focus on different participants within the conflict, end quote. It will supposedly, quote, dovetail into the end of the Cold War era and explore some of the consequences therein, end quote. With the new Black Ops title, you can expect, quote, more traditional military combat technology and familiar Black Ops gadgetry, end quote. Previous leaks have suggested that zombies will return and that Call of Duty 2024 will also feature classic maps from previous Black Ops games. Windows Central also reports that Activision is targeting a late fall, early winter 2024 launch for the new game, and that the publisher is exploring a lengthy pre-order bonus that will offer several days early access to the campaign and maybe even weeks for access to other modes. According to Charlie Intel, the new Black Ops title will be the first Call of Duty game to have a four-year development cycle. Hopefully with all that extra time in the oven, we'll get a slightly more hearty offering with Call of Duty 2024, as opposed to Sledgehammer's latest release, which in our Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 review we called an epic misfire. Now, while I wouldn't completely agree with calling it an epic misfire, I'm of course nostalgia biased because I love the original Modern Warfare 2 and all the maps are back in this one. I'm enjoying my time with Modern Warfare 3. It is a run-of-the-mill Modern Warfare Call of Duty experience. I admittedly have not touched the campaign, which is reportedly not great and very short, which is sad because I really enjoyed the Modern Warfare reboot campaign a few years back. Can't wait to see what Call of Duty with a four-year development cycle will turn out to be, but it is puzzling since Sledgehammer and Modern Warfare 3 reportedly only got an 18-month development cycle, but then Treyarch gets four years with the next Black Ops? Interesting, interesting. And number four, a Suicide Squad killed the Justice League closed alpha test has been announced. Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle writes, Warner Brothers has opened registrations for Suicide Squad killed the Justice League closed alpha test. Players who are selected to participate will get their chance to sample the game when the test is held between November 30th at 9 a.m. Eastern and December 4th at 3 a.m. Eastern. Quote, please note the game is still in development and this test will only represent a smaller, specific section of the campaign and will not be representative of the full final experience, end quote Warner said. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League will be playable solo or with up to four players in online co-op. It will support full cross-platform and cross-progression play. The upcoming alpha, which is designed to help test the game's online infrastructure, will be playable on PS5, Series X and S, and PC via Steam. PC players are advised to use a game controller for the test. Players need a Warner account to register for the alpha and will need to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to participate. Developer Rocksteady recently launched a new Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League video series alongside pre-orders for the game. Following several delays, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League release date is February 2nd, 2024. Again, this game just doesn't do it for me. Maybe I do need to get my hands on it, so maybe I will try to sign up for this alpha just to get an idea of what this game is. Even though I can admire Rocksteady from afar as being one of the greatest developers out there during their Arkham heyday, I admittedly still haven't played those games. It's been on my backlog for a long time, but I do hope this game is good. And although the hardcore continue to poop on this game, I think it is going to sell quite well considering Gotham Knights did very well even though it feels like nobody talks about that game in a positive light. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and since we were talking about sales figures this week, let's do a quick rundown of updated Xbox statistics 2023 at a glance, credit to DemandSage.com, which were updated last month. 1. 3.14 million Series X and Series S units were sold worldwide in 2023 so far. 2. The gaming revenue of Microsoft reached 16.23 billion in the year 2022. 3. The monthly active users of Microsoft were recorded to be 120 million as of 2022. 4. 68% of the Xbox players in the United States are male. And number 5. The most popular game on Xbox is Call of Duty. 
Some of these aren't surprising to see, but when we do talk about these sale figures and how much PlayStation is just trouncing Xbox in the competition, it is important to note that Xbox is still doing very, very well and making lots and lots of money. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, I've bounced around a couple of different games, continuing to play Modern Warfare 3 online multiplayer. Really enjoying that as a music and podcast game as I just continue to grind out different challenges for different guns. I fell into a rabbit hole playing the Pokemon trading card game via Nintendo Switch Online, and then Marvel Snap is a mainstay as always. Appreciate all you out there understanding as I may sound it a bit more funny on this week's episode as I am battling a cold as of recording. My name is Brandon Rosie. You can follow me on Xbox at Bros93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.